from the Ron Miller Race Car Studio, this is the Hammer Down Racing Report. And now your hosts, Scott Hammer and Ron Miller. Welcome, race fans. Hello? What? I can't hear you. Why can't I can't hear you. I can't hear you neither. Welcome, race fans. Hello? Oh, Scott. I might have to get a different microphone. What's going Here. On? Will, will that one work? Can you check one, two, check? Oh, Hello. there you go. There you go. Uh, it's, no, it's still not. No, you want the orange one? I'm going to go with red, I think. No, red. All right. Move the red one over here. Check one, two. Why isn't that working? That's weird. It was working earlier today. Hello. I'll have to get one of our technicians to take a look at it. Check one, two. I still. Is it just me? I can't hear what the heck. Can you hear me? Am I coming through? Uh, I microphone? can't hear a thing, Scott. Check one, two. Really? Yeah. Both these mics are dead. Really you want to talk on mine? Maybe. I'll go over in the corner. Me that little green one. <laughs> we'll see how many mics we can go to. <laughs> All right. Check. Hey, this one's Oh, right. yeah. Hey, there, there we go. Oh, my gosh. What is up with these two? That's, That's weird. I'm going to get blamed for that, too, I think. Well, I guess we're going to use this microphone, and it's probably going to be make the cameras go a little screwy, so I apologize about that. Anyways... Uh, welcome, race fans! There you go. <laughs> I, I already <laughs> said that, Scott. Racing report, uh, show number 73, starting off uh, lovely so far. <laughs> microphones in my face now. Um, live here for the Ron Miller uh, Race Car Studio. Don't blame it on me. <laughs> for uh, March 7th, tonight on the show, we're going to talk to uh, Dave Kemmer, who joins us. Uh, to talk about the race cars on display for Woodland Mall race cars on display. Is that, that's the official name, right? Yeah, we'll do that name. Okay. Uh, we'll talk about that. That's coming up next weekend. Uh, all kinds of things going on with that. Even just before we came on the air here, I learned of uh, some cool things. Yeah, and if you've, if you've got a race car that looks pretty cool, if you've got a drag car, oval track car, bring it down. We'd love to see it. Yeah, we want to make 30 cars this year. I was hoping for 35. Well, we can do that. Yeah. So now, um, uh, instead of looking at Dave when I talk, I think the camera will work. Maybe. Oh, yeah, we're also trying uh, new settings. So if we're having any issues uh, with uh, streaming us on Facebook Live, uh, give us a comment and let us know. If I kind of bumped up the settings, might be a little bit more than our... Uh, camera can handle, yeah, nothing could be better. Than, nothing could be better than maybe, Scott Hammer in high def. Maybe that's what broke the uh, broke the microphone. I don't know. I'm I'm kind of afraid of next week, next Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll talk about that uh, coming up uh, a little bit later as well. Make sure to visit uh, HammerDownRacingReport.com. Uh, also, like us on Facebook. Um, listen to us on iHeartRadio, Google Play, Google Podcasts, iTunes. Watch us on YouTube or watch us live every Thursday night at 7 o'clock. That's pretty cool. So uh, a lot of ways to consume our consumable programming. And uh, I just uh, read something, actually, I didn't even put a note on here, uh, that uh, podcasts such as ours have now penetrated into 51% of the American market. Basically, 51% of Americans have listened to a podcast, according to uh, 2019 Infinite Dial from Edison Media. Triton Digital Survey from January, February 2018. We would hope so, that 50, 51% of the population has listened to us. But. So, well, yeah. So for the first time, though, it, it, we've, the majority of Americans have listened to a podcast. So podcasts are becoming mainstream. Kind of, we were, we're we, cutting we, we edge, were Scott. pioneers on that's it. front here. Uh, so that's pretty cool. And uh, thanks to everybody that supported us over the uh, year and a half. Last 73 shows. 73, yeah. Make sure to give Ron Miller race cars a call up there in Laborville, Michigan, 734-856-7223. Uh, what do you got? Busy. It's that time <laughs> of year, man. You know, Scott, it's been, the, the winter has been nasty. It really has. It, it, it hit us kind of late, but uh, I. I now in second win. Last yeah. year we had third winter. Yeah, winter That's one, winter two. Yeah, but uh, I think a lot of the racers have been uh, a little lax in getting their stuff done, and now they're in full panic mode. But that's a good thing. Like me. Well, I'm almost in panic mode. But, uh, uh, well, give him a call. 734-856-7223. He will make time for you. I do. Yeah. Anytime, day or night. You know. Kathy loves that, she? <laughs> she understands. <laughs> What's the latest you've gotten a call? 
I don't know. Usually, you've answered. usually eleven o'clock. Oh, would be that'd be late. But but I tell people, you know, I, I understand that most of my customers work forty hour a week jobs and they're busy during the day, and I have no problem with them calling me at night. And, and if they figure they're in a panic and have to have something, call me at two in the morning. I don't care. One year, we were going to Jerry's Speed Shop to buy parts at 11 o'clock at night. Yeah. <laughs> yep. What, Scott? I'm looking, oh, looking for this microphone. All right. Uh, back to the show. Tonight, uh, we'll also hear from Brian Rollman. Apparently, uh, there's a new issue uh, with the uh, fire suppression system. Scott, this isn't really a new issue. It's it's an issue that everybody predicted was going to happen, and, and the sanctioning bodies said, no, 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 this is what you've got to do, and now it's happening, and, and, it's and, coming to fruition. and, and they don't know how to deal with it. Hmm. Okay. But uh, we'll let Brian break, uh, break the ice uh, w once you uh, plug him on. Okay, I, you should. You guys on Facebook should be able to hear me now. I, I didn't have a couple of the buttons pushed. I could hear me, but they couldn't hear us on Facebook. But now, now, now I've fixed myself, and I should be able to be heard. So you've got two cameras looking at you now. Yeah, I think so. Hold. Check, 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 check. Okay, just making sure that was. That's the important one that needs to hear me. Uh, let's talk about some racing uh, this past weekend. Donnie Schatz, he won uh, Thursday a week ago uh, at Las Vegas after a late pass on Darren Pittman. It was the uh, first win of the season for the 10-time series champion. Series will remain in California for the remainder of March. Their California swing. Wow. Yeah. All March long, they're going to be at uh, Thunderbird uh, Raceway uh, this weekend. Where's I saw, I saw Donnie's tire after he took it off. Oh, yeah, I did see that. It was like it was smooth. Bald. It had one groove around the outside. Wow. It was, it was dry. He it used it up. Slick. Oh, yeah. And uh, that... That uh, race at Las Vegas last week was the uh, the first time that uh, was uh, World of Outlaws, the K and N series, and I think it was USAC. USAC Western. Yeah, we we're, uh, we're did a co event, and we'll talk more about the K and N uh, Pro Series uh, race here in a little bit as well because they had a, a pretty exciting finish out there at Las Vegas. Actually, the whole weekend was pretty good, Scott. You think uh, so? The NASCAR Even on pavement? The, the cup race was good. It really okay. was. Side-by-side uh, -side racing, uh, you know. Spe it, it, speaking of that, Kyle Busch uh, won both the truck race and the Xfinity Series race at Las Vegas, but uh, could only muster a third-place finish after a pit road penalty in the cup race on Sunday. A lot of, lot, lot of uh, people are calling him the GOAT. Why? He's not because the goat. Who is? Me. Oh, all right. <laughs> I don't know, but not him. No, he really is. He the greatest of all time. That that encompasses way back to pr the beginning of NASCAR, and I don't, I, I, I don't see that. Hey, are you saying he's better than Richard Petty? Yeah. Dale Earnhardt. No. <sighs> okay. No. It's a matter of opinion. We, we won't get into Dale Earnhardt. Maybe sometime down the road, but not, not now. Joey Logano posted uh, the win over Keselowski in the uh, Cup Series race at Las Vegas on Sunday. Other notables in the truck race, Matt Crafton took third, and uh, Natalie Decker had her best truck finish, finishing in 13th. I think she started 12th, too, didn't she? Yeah. Yeah. So, speaking of uh, female drivers, back to Las Vegas, Haley Deegan. She's uh, definitely turning heads after she picked up her second K&N West Series win. She was the uh, first woman to win a NASCAR Touring Series event last fall in the K&N uh, West Series. And then she picks up win number two at, uh, I believe it was their opener too, at Las Vegas on the dirt with a last lap pass. She, she's the real deal. And uh, uh, I, I saw a meme on Facebook about uh, her oh, being... Saw, with Danica? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I saw yeah. that too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, something that at least she H Haley, win. H Haley Deegan did that Danica couldn't. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, uh, the 17-year-old won the the, uh, the series opener there, and then uh, she inked a deal with Venturini Motorsports, who Natalie Decker ran with uh, with ARCA, and uh, they're going to run 16 or 16 six ARCA races, starting uh, with Toledo Speedway being her first uh, ARCA race. Uh, that's going to be on May 19th, and then uh, they're going to run one K N. Uh, East Series race at Bristol as well. 
Uh, I would encourage all of our listeners to go watch that race. I think you'll you'll be impressed with the young lady. The Toledo race? Yes. Yeah. Speaking of uh, Toledo, we'll have uh, Scott Schultz in uh, the studio next week, GM of uh, Toledo Speedway and Fly Rack Speedway, to talk about uh, the seasons there. And uh, I've reached out to uh, Venturini Motorsports, going to try and get uh, Haley on, um, hopefully in the studio the week before. No promises, but that's what I've requested. But we're working on it. Yeah, you know. I could also request uh, um, Kyle Bush be in the studio next week. Why not? It's probably not going to happen, but I can request it. Well, he's out west. So. I, yeah, he's, he's a little far away. <laughs> he's going to make a special trip Thursday night to Toledo and then may, fly may, back out. Maybe we can get him for the Michigan race. Yeah. Uh, Inclement weather uh, has forced the World of Outlaw Morton Building Late Model Series to push back the uh, uh, this weekend's racing a- in Tennessee. They're going to move the race at Duck River uh, from Friday, March 8th to Friday, March 22nd. And the Smoky Mountain Speedway race, originally scheduled for Saturday, is going to be on Saturday, March 23rd. So, mother second winter impacting yeah. uh, Tennessee as well. Yep, winter V2 just doesn't want to let go. <laughs> yes. Uh, Must see uh, racing sprint car series has added another event, bringing the total number of races for 2019 to 13 across seven different states. The added date is at Owasso Speedway on Saturday, August 24th. It's being billed as part of the Border Wars shootout with Sandusky Speedway's date on the following day, Sunday, August 25th. Oh, that should be exciting. Yeah, I know you're a big fan of the must see. Uh, I am. Cars. They're, they're, they're fun they're to watch. They are fun to watch. They're like slot cars. You know what? Maybe we can get Jimmy McCune in here again just before that weekend. I think you that's know, a great idea. We, uh, there you go. Sounds good. He, he could uh, he could keep our record intact. All right. He's like got it. a pretty good chance of winning anyways. Yes, he does. <laughs> yeah, okay. Sounds good to me. Um, moving on. Tanner Thornton uh, was injured in a traffic accident returning from the World of Outlaw race at Las Vegas. He uh, apparently failed to slow down uh, in a construction zone with his uh, race car hauler and ran into a milk truck. His uh, pickup caught fire. It was destroyed, and the trailer was damaged. I did see a video. The only of, thing uh, that was left was one f- You couldn't really even rail. tell it was a truck. One bed rail on the left side. That yeah. was it. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, pretty uh, pretty nasty. But uh, he did suffer a cracked sternum, punctured lung, broken ribs, ribs uh, arm, and foot. Ooh. Those were broken as well. He's expected to make a full recovery, though. After a while, he's yeah. going to miss a few shows. Probably. Wow. Probably all year. And uh, we'd like to congratulate uh, former guest and Fremont 410 Sprint Champion Craig Mintz and his wife as they welcome their son Parker on Sunday morning into the world. Well, that's pretty cool. Yeah. It's like a feature win, right? Yeah. <laughs> I think. Uh, the Arkham Menard Series. <laughs> you think? I don't know. I ain't got no kids. The uh, Arkham Menard Series next race is uh, the Arca Pensacola 200 from Five Flag Speedway in Florida. That's going to be uh, this Saturday night. It's going to be on MAV TV, Lucas Oil Racing. Uh, about 7 o'clock should be the start time for that. Uh, and this weekend, uh, NASCAR will be at ISM Raceway, which I was looking at. I was like, what the hell is ISM Raceway? And then I was <laughs> like, oh, yeah, it's what Phoenix <laughs> used to be. So they're in Phoenix. What used, it used to be known as Phoenix International Raceway. It's now ISM Raceway, and I don't even remember what that stands for. Do you know what that stands for? Interna- Inter- International Motorsports? No, ISM. ISM. Whoever hmm. owns it. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, uh, they're going to be at Phoenix this weekend. The Cup Series uh, will be at 3.30. Uh, you can watch that on Fox and uh, listen to it on our sister station right next door, 103.7 CKY. The Xfinity Series will be on Saturday at 4 o'clock, and uh, the trucks are, are off, actually, until Martinsville on March 23rd. I think the trucks have some of the best racing. But they you said, really do. You yeah, said they do. You like the uh, the Cup race, though, on Sunday. I didn't say I liked it. It was... It was... As NASCAR was it watchable? Go- yes, Did it was. Did you fall asleep? Only momentarily. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it was it was probably one of the better NASCAR races I've seen. All right. So as far as I usually judge races on how long of a nap I took during it. So as far as that went, uh, how does your nap time compare to uh I'll bet it wasn't over like last year. I'll bet it wasn't over a 10 minute nap, Scott. Well, that's not bad then. Yeah. And you watched the whole race? Y- yeah. I watched it and I went to the walleye hockey game so I didn't get to see a lot of the race, so I recorded it and watched it and fast forward. Well, that always works too. Yeah, 
It makes watching it makes the block of time you have to a lot a lot less a lot shorter. Uh, I did hear something though that uh, originally NASCAR races were you know long, 500, 400 miles, right. whatever, because uh, the engines you know back back then you know a lot of the engines they didn't make it went up in smoke. Yeah, it was you know, and now that's not. I mean, every once in a while you'll have an issue, but it's not really a big issue. So. They're talking about, well, why don't we, uh, you know, shorten the races? Well, what about Natalie Decker? Now, the, there's a motor that went up in smoke. Wasn't it Natalie that... Uh, she ran over a part, though. I thought it was her tire. Was it? She ran over... Yeah, it was her... I thought her Maybe. tire no, it was shredded her tire, everything. And it took out a, a, a hose. oil cooler. Is that what it was? Oil I thought cooler it, something or a line. Yeah. yeah. Big flames. Yeah, it was big flames. It wasn't her motor's fault. It was the tire coming apart's fault. Okay. And then we would have the think of the money they would save too. They wouldn't have to have as many tires. They probably get some more races out of each motor. I, I <laughs> no, they freshen them up every race. All right. Um, so coming up next weekend, uh, before we actually start talking about that, uh, coming up in a little bit, we'll talk. Uh, actually, Brian Roman was uh, going to call in live, but he forgot he had a meeting, so I actually talked to him uh, a little bit before we uh, went on here, and uh, we'll we'll hear from Brian. Uh, in just a little bit. Before we get to that, I want to talk to Dave Kammer from the Woodland Mall Race Cars on Display. 30th annual. 30th annual. Yes. Uh, that's coming up uh, next weekend. Let's, uh, go ahead and tell us about that. Um, it's going to be next weekend, Friday through Sunday, March 15th to the 17th, um, at the Woodland Mall in Bowling Green. We've got all kinds of cars coming. Uh, probably Mr. Miller and hopefully you. A couple of Mr. <laughs> Millers. Oh, good. Um, on Friday, we're going to have a live podcast yep. of the Hammerdown Race Report. And then, we'll, uh, we will be interviewing, interviewing racers. Drivers. Yeah. Absolutely. Maybe, maybe even a car owner or two. You so, never know. So if there's, drivers that are, if there's drivers that are listening, they're going to be there. You, we will have a camera, and you will be, will be on camera. So uh, That's it. If you want to represent yourself, you know, wear your sponsor's T-shirts, wear your, wear your Ryan Missler T-shirt if you're Ryan Absolutely. Missler. Absolutely. I'm yeah. even working on a couple of promoters. Excellent. Uh, see what happens. On Saturday, we're going to have the Hoserville, Ohio um, charity auction for the injured drivers. That's going to be from 3 to 5. I think it's, I thought it was from 2. No, Dwayne. I thought Dwayne said it was Dwayne 2. Dwayne put that on there, and then I told him, I said, did you want to move it? And he said, well, I put the wrong time on there, so then he corrected <laughs> it. So, so it's 2. Yeah, we're sure no, it's, it's three. It's, I mean, three. It's yeah, three that's to five. Okay. But if you're there at two, you'll be there in plenty of time. Oh yeah, yeah. You get a better seat. You can, you can scope out the uh, the items uh, that the are going to be auctioned off. Yeah, he's he usually has about a hundred, a hundred and five items to auction off. And and it will be a professional auctioneer. And yeah, there are a lot of there there will a, a boatload of lots of of auction material. Probably about a hundred and five. Right. Um, he raises a bunch of money. And and those items include like uh, memorabilia from drivers and yeah, door, door panels. panels and and wing panels. One one guy donated a a, a destroyed wheel. Yeah, Rick. Oh Shearer, hell, I could donate a whole bunch of that kind of stuff. <laughs> Rick Shear. I didn't know you wanted destroyed stuff. Rick Shear bought it one year, took it home, said, "What can we do with this wheel?" And he decided to make a clock out of it. And Rick's a photographer at, at Fremont. And he took a whole bunch of these photos and put a whole bunch of flip bricks in it. And he painted it up, and then he donated it the next year. Nice. Yeah, it was. It looked really neat. And all the proceeds go to, to, an, in, to an injured driver's fund. Yeah. Yeah, Dwayne runs it. Um, if somebody gets hurt, he donates a little money to help out financially. He still has two to five on his uh, Facebook event there. Does he? Yeah. Oh, man, I have to talk to him about that. <laughs> Because some places he did change it. See, I wasn't making fake news. So it'll be there at 2. That way you can come and check out the cars. And exactly. Then, exactly. And then the auction will start at 3. Exactly. Now, I understand that there's also going to be another exciting feature at the mall that weekend. Breaking uh, news. Yeah. Oh, um, no, it's not breaking. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was breaking to me. In the, uh, in the old uh, storefront that uh, was the... What, what, what? 
we're not done already, are we? No. Nah. <laughs> Go ahead. And it there was the old storefront for the uh, big indoor garage sale. They've now built uh, a big RC car track, uh, fully carpeted, banked, and I think they'll be racing all weekend. As a matter of fact, Jason Brown, if you're listening, uh, why don't you give us a call, uh, 419-214-0925. Wow, you didn't even have to look at that. Scott, I didn't have to look. <laughs> All right, you keep an eye on that red light. Oh, I will. I will if there. I see the red light. Um, Any idea if you can bring your own uh, RC I don't car know. I, I'm hoping That's Jason will fill us in. Um, I know that uh, the RC cars, uh, and these are the electric ones, so you're not going to have to worry no about fumes ones. or anything. Um, but I know they really get with the program, and I, I think it's going to be exciting. Is it an oval track? Or yes. Or is it like a... Okay. I think it's an oval. Banked? Yes. I don't know. I was. They were still building it when I was over there. Cool. Somebody ring Jason Brown's bell, would you? <laughs> I thought you were talking about the STIDA insurance policies that, that Dwayne's got. He's got. Well, yeah, you can fill us in on that. <laughs> now, now, Dwayne did talk about that a little bit a couple of weeks ago. But. He's got two, pal- two medical policies. It's a half a million dollars each for drivers who either donate an item, get your name in one bucket, and if you are present, if you're a driver and present, your name goes in a second bucket, and he's got two drawings for a half a million dollar medical policy. Cool. Now, if somebody has something they want to donate still, is it too late to no, do that? No, bring, it, they, over, bring it over. Bring Can they do that through you, or do they got to contact uh, Dwayne Hancock? Who, how, me, how can they do that? You can contact me. We can con- contact Dwayne Hancock. I don't have his phone number, but he's on. he's got a Facebook page. Hoserville, Ohio, yes, if you search that um, uh, yeah. on Facebook. Send him a message. He's got his phone number on there. Or you can get a hold of me or, or just bring it over during the weekend, and we'll take care of it. And on top of all of that, there will be door prizes all weekend. Yeah, we got door prizes and 50-50 drawings. Yep. So there's always going to be something going on. And yeah, I, exactly. I think this is going to be an exciting show, Dave. I hope so. How many, uh, how many uh, racetracks will be represented there? Do you know? Um, three. Okay. At least. Are they all dirt? Three. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And maybe get some schedules out Toledo. Hopefully. Have you at all reached out to the folks from Sandusky? See, no, I See haven't. if they would like... Uh, I haven't. Maybe Chris Mize would like to be there? No, I haven't. Okay. I bet you would. He usually listens to this, so... Uh, Chris, give uh, Dave a call. What's your number? Four one nine three four six four two four six. There you go. Or go to race cars on display. Race cars on display. Woodland Mall race cars on display Facebook page. That's it. And send me a message. We'll answer it. Now, if somebody has a uh, a race car and they want to uh, bring it out there to sh- to show off, is there any prerequisites for that? Uh, show up about show up on Thursday. We'd like to have you there around seven to eight o'clock. We'll have a form to fill during, out. During our show next week, show up there. Exactly. Okay. Record it and play it later <laughs> yeah. like I am. Um, we have a form to fill out. We'll have a short meeting. Nine o'clock, we move in. And we need the fuel cell sealed up with tape and a piece of plastic underneath the car. And the battery it disconnected or taken out. So that's it. Three, that's it. three things. Three things. That's it. And somebody, Just so some six-year-old kid can't get in it and yeah. drive away. Well, it's a fire department issue. I understand. They'll yeah. come. They'll come over and look at us on Friday. They always do. Looks like uh, Dwayne just uh, joined us. So, if uh, jo- if you want to put your uh, phone number up or how uh, people can get, contact you, Dwayne, if they have something they want to uh, donate for the uh, auction next Saturday, uh, type something in there and, and we'll pass that along. <laughs> and Jason Brown, get in touch with us. Oh yeah, but we want to know more about this uh, uh, RC that thing. That could be on. fun. Yeah. So it, the cards are going to be there Friday, Saturday, and, and Sunday. Sunday. So and anybody during, during mall hours. Yep. Nine and to I, nine to no, it's ten to nine, Friday and Saturday, noon to five on Sunday. So and it's free. It's not going to free. Yep. It's free to show off your car. Free for uh, people to everything's uh, free. Come out to, and uh, check out the cars. Meet the drivers. Talk to the different racetracks. Bring get the kids over. Most most of the cars uh, encourage kids to sit in them. Exactly. Some of the some of the adults even get in them. <laughs> All right, I got uh, Dwayne's number here. If you have uh, something for the Hoserville, Ohio auction uh, that you uh, want to get to him, 
419-553-6746. Uh, you can get a get a hold of uh, Dwayne Hancock there. Or go to his Facebook page, Ho- Hoserville, Ohio. Several options. Um, I was going to ask uh, what other ac- activities uh, going on. Obviously, you got the, the all four, kinds of things going four on. Four prizes, 50-50 drawing. Now, is that all weekend long, or is that concentrated at certain we'll times? Have, we'll have a 50-50 drawing on Saturday and Sunday. Friday, we pretty much don't do very much. But Saturday and oh, Sunday. Oh, what are you there. talking about? Friday well, night, got, there's a huge got, thing going oh, yeah, on. We got the huge thing yeah. going on. The if, first ever <laughs> on location Hammer Down Racing Report, live from the Woodland Mall. Uh, what That's going to start at 7 o'clock? 7 and, to uh, 8.30, 9 o'clock. And everybody that uh, has their cars out there should be out there so we can We make a list. We make a list on there. Thursday when they come in if you want to be there. We're, we're getting brand new equipment for this so that uh, we can do this... Uh, God, I hope it works. And, and, <laughs> and, <laughs> it and, works better than the Ron Miller Race Car Studio microphones. And and if they don't show up for the interviews, then we confiscate their race cars. Yeah, we can. Or we take them out in the parking lot and have our own little race. Oh, baby. Now, as I recall, there's uh, some potholes in that parking lot, too. So a lot. It could be no, a not much different than any other there racetrack. Go, okay. We've left a few cars on the front on the front door on Saturday, on Sunday night. Really? Yeah, if they don't go, we push them out. They got to go. Well, I guess that's a good way if you, you're done with your race car, just leave it at the mall. We left the 410 Sprint out in the front, outside on the front sidewalk one night. Hey, call me Saturday or Sunday if there's anything like that left over. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk. <laughs> um, how many years uh, have you been? This is the 30th year, right? This is the 30th. And how many years have you been involved? Um, I joined the Ohio Oval Track, which originally put the show on 30 years ago. At the first show. Has it always been at uh, Woodland Mall? Yeah. We've also done shows at Tiffin and Finley. And in addition to it? or In addition. Okay. And we also did the new car show at Seagate Center one year. Put a couple of cars in there. So why do you uh, why do you can continue to do this? Just, just something, you know, just we see people that we don't see all winter. I've been uh, racing all my life. I've built cars. I've worked at racetracks. And I just just see people, and I sat down, and I talked to people. Just love love the racing. Love of the sport. Yeah. Okay. That's, uh, that's, that's a good reason. And, when, it, and it gives the fans a chance to get up close and personal with the drivers, with the race cars. Right. It, it really is a cool deal. Right. And there's not many malls yeah. left. Or it. It's, uh, it. The malls are kind of a dying. I mean, Franklin Park Mall, indoor malls, I should say, are, are kind of a dying breed. Right. Uh, you know, didn't we have a few shows uh, in Oregon at the at the mall there, Woodville Mall? Woodville Mall. God, I don't remember. I think so, Dave. I, I don't remember. That's been a long time ago. Yeah. You, yes. So will this be the? Will, will there be more race cars on display at the Woodland Mall in the future? Or could this know. be the last one? I don't know. Oh. <laughs> we need to press further on this. <laughs> That has yet to be decided. Okay. The mall, I'm assuming, is pretty uh, favorable about having the mall. Yeah, this the event. mall will have it. It's just who wants to run it. Actually, it's a pretty big deal for the mall. Uh, yeah. it, as far as attendance, it's it's really good. Yeah, when we disbanded the club, the mall manager asked us, well, what about the car show? Because it brought so many people in, and she wanted to have it. And so she took it over, and she paid for everything. We just put it on. And it's been that way ever since. Now, there's all kinds of different uh, cars that are there. you got oh, sprint cars, got, go-karts, right. asphalt cars, We've got some 600 cars. micro sprints coming. Um, got a whole bunch of go-karts, um, sprint cars, late models, modified. Hopefully a couple of quarter midgets. I think so. I think. <laughs> um, they haven't contacted me, but they were there last year. Yep. How many cars did we have uh, last year? 23, 24, something oh. like that. Is that uh, on an upswing from the year before, or is that yeah, down? That's about an about average, okay. yeah. One year we had 63 cars. Where the heck did you put them all? Clear back in the back. <laughs> you had to, like, put them in the stores. We had them everywhere. We had them down every aisle. Yeah, absolutely. We had them tight-packed sideways. What we year had was them that? in the back. Oh, God, I don't know. What decade? Long time ago. Okay. <laughs> 90s. 
Yeah, 90s. Any idea how many uh, cars you expect uh, next weekend? Well, I would say probably 25, a good number. Okay. Now, do uh, if somebody does want to bring their car out, do they need to contact you ahead of time, or can we they like, just show up? Uh, we like to, to, to have somebody call us, but they don't have to. Okay. Um, I'm available from 10 in the morning to 10 at night. You can call me. And go ahead and give out uh, your number again. 419 346 4246. And again, that's Dave Kemmer. Just call Dave. Just call Dave. Yep. You know, something else uh, from the mall itself uh, that's really an attraction is X Racer Gary Navarre has a, a shop there that has a whole boatload of. Uh, Racing I heard, memorabilia. I heard X Ray in like I just went to X rated. I was like <laughs> X racing. Everything, everything you said after that I was like, what is he talking about? X rated stuff. X racer, okay, Scott. Gotcha. Get your mind out of the gutter. I dude. got a head cold, so and you can oh. talk to him for about two, three hours if you want. Absolutely. To. There's a lot of racers there you can talk to for quite a while. Me? Well, yeah, you. I'm all everybody that's there. Ron. Yeah. Ornery Don. Ornery Don. Yeah. So plan on being out there again. The The dates are... Uh, March the, 15th, 16th, and 17th. That's uh, a week from tomorrow, yep. a week from Saturday, and a week from Sunday. And again, uh, we'll be out there uh, Friday night at 7. So come on out and uh, see the train wreck. That will be the first ever Hammerdown Racing Report live on location. We'll be moving in. You can be on You can be on the show. You can be moving in one week from tonight, right now. Right now, yeah. So, all right. Looking forward to that. Hopefully, uh, we'll make the 30th annual Woodland Mall the biggest ever. I want to have 90 cars. We can't fit 90 cars. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think you can. I don't know. What condition do the... Is there any requirements as far as the condition? As long as there's no obvious safety defects, you know, big metal knives sticking out of the car or something. And, and, And clean the leaves out from under the seat. Yeah. So, so it doesn't have to be pristine. There can be a little bit of use in the fender. Yeah. Especially this time of year, Scott, a lot of racers don't have their engines in the car. So um, we can't drive them into the mall anyway. So yeah, if it, you don't have an engine, who cares? Yeah, it, makes it, light, it makes it easier to, to move in. That's it. Yeah, because you can't drive it in there. I learned that last year. Nope. Did somebody yell at you, Scott? No, I didn't drive it in. You drove it out. I drove it up. You can drive door. it. You can drive oh, it up to the door. Yeah, and drive it out the door, but you can't move it. You can't drive it yeah, inside. Right. That would be a problem. I don't know. They used to have a tractor show over there. They used to drive the tractors in. So it's, your car doesn't have to be pristine. Is is basically the point I was. The race about. car, Scott. At least, so. at least wash hey. it. Okay. At least wash it. Well, then there's a chance that the Ocho could be there. All right. I get your good he, spot. He's got to. I got to get it to him and get it back in, in record time. <laughs> No problem. Okay, cool. So, uh, cool. Woodland Mall, race cars on display. We'll talk uh, more about that next week as well and while everybody's loading in and, again, be out there that Friday night. So uh, Next week's show could be a tad on the short side. Could be. Well, Scott likes to talk, though. Again, we're going to have uh, Scott Schultz for Toledo oh, yeah. Speedway. Oh, no. Flat Rock. <laughs> That's right. You might have to bring your car with you. Oh, I planned you on plan- it. Okay. Well, then, yeah. So, cool. Uh, also, um... Now, before we move forward there, let's uh, talk about this uh, fire suppression system issue. Let's start off uh, here what uh, Brian Ruhlman had to say about this. Yep, let's do that. And i got to turn my camera thing here so I can actually see what I'm doing. All right, here, here's here's Brian Ruhlman on, uh, on this issue. Well, I have a, cus- a customer's car here where the um, uh, one of the glass fuses had been set off, so the bottle was empty. And I posted that on uh, Facebook just to um, let people know that, you know, to check their systems. And since then, we've had, gosh, probably 50 people say they've had similar experiences. Uh, Then I had a customer call up that had bought a brand new one, and it was empty out of the box. And uh, went back in Motor State, I guess, it had a recall on them, and uh, many of the ones they had on their shelf were already empty. So uh, I guess they're going to be, you know, working on a solution. And but uh, you know, in the meantime, everybody needs to look at their stuff. And uh, you know, if you have a fire system on there uh, and you're going to rely on it, uh, you want to make sure it's usable. Now, are there different uh, fire systems, or is this just a specific one that's having an issue? 
this is the only one I've experienced is a is one particular brand, uh, the Fire Bottle brand. Um, I can't really speak with any uh, experience on the others. Um, I have heard of some having rocks uh, that would chip into the uh, cylinder and cause it to leak down. Um, you know, there, there's all kinds of failure modes, I guess. Uh, the latest one with the new ones, I guess, is a lot, the uh, lines are leaking. Um, so they're discharging or losing pressure uh, before they're even uh, put in the cars. So probably not going to help you much if there's a fire. No, and it's, uh, you know, it's something that's mandated, and you spend, you know, $800 on one, and, uh, you know, you expect to get uh, something that's going to work. What uh, what series mandate these? Um, pretty much all of the late model series, uh, whether it's Lucas Oil, World of Outlaw, UMP, Eldora, um, have mandated it for the late models. Uh, the modifieds are mandatory at Eldora. The stock cars are mandatory at Eldora. Um, and everybody else, uh, modified-wise, is uh, uh, just recommended for right now. Gotcha. And uh, the only uh, advice that you can give or the only solution that uh, I guess uh, there is is just to, to check everything and make sure you don't have any of these issues, correct? Yeah, check it. And if you need to, uh, you know, get a hold of the company. And uh, my understanding is they'll, uh, they'll warranty them and make them right. So Brian Roman there on uh, the issue, I guess that kind of blew up the other night uh, on Facebook uh, where he was um, – Finding that, uh, what what do you have on that? Well, when this when when the fire bottle rule was initially uh, put out there, there, was, there is, does the does the rule is it for the fire bottle system or just any kind of? I don't it, know. It, it has another? it has to be a ten pound automatic discharge uh, fire system, and I don't think it specifies what the agent has to be only that it has to be certified now are there other manufacturers of, yes. of that besides yeah. fire bottle yep fire bottle okay. safe craft so you can choose which one right right okay. um but uh, most of them are in an aluminum bottle and i guess the aluminum bottles are tending to fail uh with even just a little stone ding in them uh that the metal that the, that the aluminum will fatigue uh and leak down and like brian says the uh the lines uh leaking sounds like there's a lot of issues with with these well and, and there was initially there was a lot of speculation about whether the environment we're asking the the fire systems to work in is is appropriate for the technology that they're using uh brian was sh uh sharing with us that uh there little glass fuse that uh is supposed to fracture in case of a fire um but boy i'm telling you in a dirt car there's a lot of things that could fracture a little glass fuse and and set this off have you heard of anybody having that go off while they're racing um on brian rollman's facebook page uh yes what did you say that okay. uh, I, obviously i haven't seen it but uh there are people that have been racing and and it goes off and i talked to him a, a little bit more longer than uh, that recording uh, I guess this is a system that they just mandated uh, before last season, right? Correct. So, how long did they did they do any testing? No, they didn't do any testing. They just and, and I really don't know where the rule came from. That guy got killed down at Southern Ohio Speedway. That's right. I do remember that. Then he got upside down and was on fire. And he had a he had a single stage pump, a mechanical pump on the on the block, and so he plugged up that hole in the fuel cell. Well, either the top come out or it come loose and it started dripping. Right. And the, the battery fuel, come he, out. He was upside down. He and, was and upside fuel, down. And fuel started running right. out. And the battery come out and shorted out on the bottom of the deck. So this would fire. have been one of those knee-jerk reactions. You know, we got to do something right. because we don't want, the, we can't have this happen again where somebody gets killed because of it. But maybe this wasn't necessarily the right action to do. Or maybe they should take a step back. Take a look at it. Uh, right, maybe some more testing. May, maybe go with a, a, a if they if they insist on a ten pound system, uh, a manually activated system rather than uh, the automatic discharge. And I understand that in a perfect world, the automatic discharge is the right way to go because a driver could be unconscious or right. uh, incapacitated some way. Um, so now, in in a perfect world, but boy, I'm telling you, dirt racing is not a perfect world.
Or well, maybe, or maybe a, a steel container. Yeah, but that, if, st that still doesn't, uh, they still have a glass fuse that has oh, to fracture right. Right. to set it off. Uh, there's plastic lines, there's aluminum lines, um, and all of them are subject to failure. Right. I would think the aluminum lines would be more subject to failure than maybe a because steel of vibration, or stainless sure. steel. Yeah, or, or right. rock. Or coming off the shelf empty, seems like that's a problem that's already weird. that's, yeah, weird that's, that's a real problem especially if you're <laughs> right. paying eight hundred dollars you know for this system i mean is that, is that part of it too the cost is is pretty high and you expect you know something that's going to cost that much to well and, and, and that, br that, that brings up another issue scott um years ago if you read a rule book it said that a driver's suit was suggested um it Really? The, that was the, the I didn't sanction, even know the, the sanctioning oh, yeah. the sanctioning yeah. bodies were very afraid to tell you what you had to use to keep you safe because if something happened and it didn't keep you safe, they could li they could be liable. So that actually that's something else Brian had mentioned uh, once we we stopped recording there that you know they're mandating something and if somebody does get hurt and one of these things doesn't work uh, you know that you know who's liable at that point. Oh, absolutely. The sanctioning bodies. Because they are, said you had to have it. The sanctioning body said this is what you have to keep you safe from a fire. It didn't work. So uh, this seems like a, a whole can of worms that uh, has yet to actually get a resolution. But the rule hasn't changed. I'm assuming no. it's still a mandated uh, system. Right. Do they put the disclaimer on the, that comes with the chassis? <laughs> Racing that's, is inherently dangerous. Yeah. Exactly, that's what it says. Yeah. Yes, I know. Yeah. That, they're they're yeah, welded but, right but, but, on the. By the time the they get done with the disclaimers, it's going to read like war and peace. You know, you'll need a bigger car. <laughs> that's it. Have to have a trailer just to carry the disclaimer behind. It. <laughs> right. So, have you installed any of these uh, fire suppression systems? Yes. And is there any one that uh, you would recommend over another? Are they all pretty much the same, or? They're all pretty much the same. Same costs. Or real close, more. real close. How different uh, are they than uh, what uh, what uh, the guys in the NASCAR have? Same systems. Is it the same exact system? I believe. I wonder why how they're what? not having issues, or at least not that. Well, we're about. now they can have them mounted in the trunk area of the car, which is much more protected. Isn't theirs? They can activate theirs. I thought most of them also have a manual override. Okay. Do the ones in the, the you know at the late the local track level? Do they have a most manual? of them have okay. a manual override? Okay, and they don't have clods coming up, hitting yeah, them or stones. Not not too often, I suppose. You know, no. or, or you know what what happens if you're on a muddy track and, and the sensor gets coated with mud? How effective is it? Where exactly is the sensor? Wherever the discharge point is, at the fuel cell, at the motor, at the driver. So it would be. A, rather difficult to ensure that there was no, no way that any piece of uh, debris, mud, rock, whatever, could hit that because pretty much any part of a... Think a, about a, the uh, environment we race in. Yeah. Right. Well, I've seen... Uh, yeah. Yes. I've seen where the mud coats my car, and it's every... So basically anything on the track can go everywhere. Mm -hmm. And anywhere. And it does. Okay, we've just had a half-hour rain. I want every car out on the track to roll it in. Exactly, and that probably would would is uh, would mud make that ineffective then? If Could it very just, well. Okay. So maybe these, we need some engineers to go back to the drawing board and come up with a better system. Luckily, Brian be, Roman is an engineer, and maybe and, he'll come up with an answer. And then it'll be the Roman fire suppression system. That would work. The RFSS <laughs> sounds like a boat. <laughs> The USS Ruhlman. I like it. So, all right. Well, I'm sure we'll hear uh, more about this in the future. Yeah. It's not. Ma is it mandated any of the tracks around here? Yeah. For their yeah. weekly series. El Eldora, I believe. Was, Eldora was one of the first was ones. One of the too. first, and then all the sanctioning bodies jumped in behind right. Eldora. So, but I mean, Oakshade, Fremont, Attica. Any UMP track is supposed to have them on the car. What? <laughs> right? Am I right? Yes. I thought that's no, what the rule said. It, 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 that's what the rule says. Along with a full containment seat and door plates. Door plates. And do the tracks enforce this? 
It appears that UMP... Or should I not be asking these questions? That's not a good question, I don't think. <laughs> That's probably a question you shouldn't ask. Okay. Good enough. NASCAR also installs new stuff on a regular basis. Unlike most... I guess that makes sense. Bill posted, you know, they probably... They got different cars they run each week, and they probably put new stuff on all the time where probably. us weekly guys are running the same stuff for you. ever. I have heard that there is... Someone that that's buying up all the NASCAR ones, um, making sure they're filled, and then selling them like refurbished at at a, at a discounted rate. Hmm. I, I've heard that there is somebody doing that. No idea who or I can believe that's else. happened because they sell everything else. Absolutely. Now, if someone needs one of these systems, is is that something they can get from yes. Ron Miller Race Cars? Right. Okay. Yeah. Brian was talking about. Uh, Motor State Distributing being uh, a warehouse that sells them, and and um, I think any of the major uh, uh, race shops in, in this area buy a lot for Motor State. So yes, and, and it's not just Motor State Distributing that carries it. Uh, Jags, Summit. Now, what about uh, uh, if it does go off to, to get them refilled? I thought I saw that that's got a, a pretty pretty big price tag on it too, like three hundred bucks. So it's not not chump change to go out. No, and get uh, that not at all. Back up. I did read a, a comment uh, on Brian's original post uh, as well that uh, was rather interesting to me, where some guy pointed out, you know, say you're in a heat race and uh, the thing goes off, are you done for the night? Are you not allowed to race anymore? That, and that was a very good question. Yeah. What is the? Do you know what the, what the, any of the sanctioning bodies would say to uh, that? I would suppose. I would imagine that technic technically you'd be out for the night because you no longer have that ten pound system. Right. I'd think so. Okay. Interesting. It makes me not want to race a late model or a modified or any of these uh sanctions <laughs> sanctioning bodies. I'll it would probably be better to have one. Well yeah, well one. yeah. If I had unlimited funds, I would definitely have all that. I'd have the top of the line safety equipment. Because eight hundred bucks is a lot cheaper than sitting in a hospital yes, for this is true. six months. Burned yes. up. Yeah. From what I hear, fire is not fun. No. So you wanna see the scar on my leg? No, I'm good. <laughs> no, we're good with that. I'm good. No, no thanks. Dave. We don't need to see your leg. <laughs> don't forget there's video cameras in here. So um coming up uh next